Okay, so how did I do that? First things first, we're going to come into our content browser here and right click and go to user interface and we're going to make a widget and we'll call this typewriter. We're going to open up, well, typewriter, that's not what we want, but whatever. And in here, we're going to add a horizontal box. This is where we're going to hold our text. And I'll just make this 1500 by 100. You guys can make this whatever size you want. This is just what I'm going to use for now and I'm going to anchor it to the center and then I'm going to add in this text widget and we'll put that in the horizontal box now I'm going to click on the text I'm going to make sure this is set to fill align to the center both horizontal and vertical I'm going to make this size a little bit bigger like 48 and then I'm going to keep scrolling all the way down. Justification, just put it in the center. And this, auto wrap text. Make sure this is unchecked. And then wrap text, we want to put 1500. Because this is the size of the horizontal box that we made. If we look up here, it says 1500 for the X. So we want to make sure the text starts wrapping when it gets to the edge of this box. All right. Then we're going to go into the graph. I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. I'm just going to make one custom event. And we'll say initiate. Now off of here, I want to have a custom macro. So I'll click right here on the macro. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Right click here and type for each loop. So this is the standard for each loop. I'm going to double click on this to open it up. And what I want to do is just take all of these nodes, control C, and then come in here and paste them so I don't have to remake that whole thing. Because we're only going to like make one modification to that. So we'll paste these all in here. And then what I'm going to do on our input, I want to make the input look exactly like this input. So it has an execution and a wildcard array. And same thing for the output. It has a loop body, an array element wildcard, an array index integer, and an execution pin for completed. So we're going to replicate that in our custom macro. So if we click on the input and we hit this button twice, we make two pins. And the first one we're going to call execution. And we're going to make its type an execution pin. And the second one we're going to say array. And we're going to make this a wildcard. And make sure we click here and change it to an array. And then we're going to add an extra one. We'll call it delay. This is how fast the typewriter is going to go. And we'll make this a float and make it a single variable. Now we're going to hook the execution up to this assign here. And from this array, we're going to go into the length. And we're going to go over here to the git. So that's hooked up now. Now we need to do the output. So we're going to click on this, come down here, and make four pins. The first one we'll call loop body, and this is going to be an execution. The second one is array element, and this will be a wildcard. Third one array index is an integer and finally completed
it's going to be an execution pin. So from this zero on the sequence, we'll hook into the loop body. From the get, we'll hook into the array element. From the false here, we're going to hook into the completed. And the array index is going to come all the way back here to the bottom local integer variable. Connect it there. And then right here after this assign, before it kind of loops back to this branch, we're going to add a delay. So drag off, type delay. And then we're going to take this pin and drag all the way back and hook it into here. We're going to compile that and save. And that is our custom macro. We will give this a name for each loop delayed. Okay. So off of this initiate, we want to pull our macro out. And we'll hook this up to the execution. And now we want to make one variable in here called full text. And we want to make this a text variable. Now what this is going to represent is the full text, exactly what I said, of whatever you want to type out in this widget. So we're going to drag this into here, get full text, and then we want to make this a string. Just type in to string. So pull out, release, type to string, and then this node will come up and look like this. And then from here we're going to drag out and say make array no character. What is this called? There. Get character array from string. So this is going to take your whole text, turn it into a string, and then put each one of those characters from that string into an array. And this is what we're going to use to loop through here. For this delay, we'll just put 0.1 for now. So what do we want it to do with each one of these characters now that we have that? What we want to do is have it basically print one character at a time, flash that to the screen, and then print the second character, the third character, the fourth character, one at a time. But it has to remember the ones that it's already printed before and keep adding one to it. So how are we going to do that? So we're going to make a couple more variables. One is going to be called current character. And then another one is going to be called built text. So what we're going to do from this is we're going to drag off of here. And we will say, no, we'll create a function. So we're going to click here and add function, and this will be called write text. And what we're going to do with this function is we're going to get our current character, get, and then we're going to go to string, and we're going to say built text here, get it. And we also want this to be a string. And what we're going to do with these two is append them together. So we're going to drag off of this and say append. And we're going to hook that up like this. Now make sure the built text is in A and the current character is in B because you're going to add A to B each time. So for built text, we want this, we'll compile it here. We want the default value to be nothing. And the current character we're actually going to set with this loop. So if we go back, we don't need this anymore. If we go back to our event graph, this is going to be our current character because it's pulling each one of these things out of this string. And that's what this single character is going to be here. So what you want to do is say, make this go to text. So we're going to turn that character into a text. And then we're going to drag out from current character, 
holding Alt, it's a little shortcut, and we'll be able to set this. So we're going to hook this up into here, and hook this to here, and then we want to call our function. So drag out, say call write text. So what this is going to do is pull out each character one at a time, set the current character, and then call our function to write text. And our write text function now is going to take this thing that's built text, which right now has nothing, it's going to add the current character to it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set built text. So we're going to take built text, drag it out, hold alt, release, and now we're going to get built text set. So we'll drag this in here, and then we want this to hook up to there. So as you can see, each time we add a character, we're going to append it to the previously built text, and then we're going to set the built text. And then, let me see, so if we keep writing, we're eventually going to get to the end, and when this is complete, what we want to do is clear our built text. So we'll drag built text out, hold alt, and we want to set it to nothing. Compile, save, and let us test this out. So type in whatever text you want down here. Compile, save. And now what I'm going to do, minimize all of this. And this can be in your player character, it can be in a player controller, whatever you want. I'm going to make a controller. So I'm going to right click in here and go to player controller. And just say new controller. And we're going to open this up. Go into the event graph. And off of begin play, we'll have a sequence. And what I want to do first is create that widget. So we'll drag off, type create widget. Here we are. And then we want to select that typer writer, retarded thing I made. And then from here, we're going to promote this to a variable. So right click here, promote to variable, type writer ref. And what we want to do now is add to viewport. So drag off of this pin, say add to viewport. And then we'll drag off again and say set visibility. And we want this to initially be hidden. Set this to hidden. And now what we'll do, once we have that done, I'll right click here and type in space to get spacebar. This is just the event I'm going to use to fire this off. So when I get the spacebar, what I want to do is get my typewriter reference. So drag out here and say get. And we want to drag off and say call initiate. And we'll hook these up. And we also want to drag off and say set visibility. And we want to make that visible. And we'll put that here. All right. So we'll compile, save, we'll minimize this. I'm going to make sure I'm using that controller save, and we will hit play and see how this works out. So here we are, I'm going to hit spacebar, text block. Not what we wanted. So what happened? 
Ah, just forgetting something. So, in our designer, we want to make sure this text block here is set to a variable because we actually want to change that here in the right text. We want to drag this out and say set text and we want that to be our built text. Compile save play spacebar and there you have it guys typewriter widget alright I'll see you later